Hello, let's do a Poison Ogre Arrow Plague Spy Critical Starter build. In this one you can focus on dodge and armor. However, picking up armor early might be a tough, as there is not enough stat points to spare. Endgame of this build is S tier, as the scaling doesn't fall off. Right now, let's get into the gameplay. Skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the Ogre Arrow. It's Confidence, additional poison damage, quick attack, Pierce Wound and Piercing. Piercing is a normal synth, but this one is a must. Plague Spike with Multi-Shot, additional poison damage, area effect, fine weakness and Winding Wind. Instead of using Winding Wind, you can use Preserve Mana if you have some mana issues. For movement abilities, it's Roll. And trickshot. Trickshot is a blue synth, but this is the only attack movement you can use with a bow. With use count and disarm. For attack enhances vital strike with enhanced effect, increased duration and time acceleration. For siphon life, it's time acceleration and increased duration. For a toggle is illusion arrow converted to fire damage with extract energy. For crowd control, it's shout, shout of justice with buff activation with crowd control. For the seal is Condensed Destruction, or you can use Critical Chance. For Defensive Seal is Seal of Dodge, but you can use Seal of Chaos Resist, Elemental Resist, or Physical Domain, Elemental Domain, whatever you need the most. For Chance, you want to start with Castor for Elemental Damage Amp and Elemental Damage Shake in Degrees. Then you can go into Vespa for Poison Damage Amplification and Poison Damage Decrease. For the third one is level. You can you can do level second depending how much dodge do you need. If you have not that much dodge, you can skip Vespa and go into level first. So it's projectile damage jam plus dodge rate. After that, you have a choice. You can stay with three blessings or you can go into Alyssa. But from Alyssa, only that plague spike is gonna benefit. For the charms themselves, you want critical rate damage, critical rate. After that, you can pick up Damage Multiplier. Damage Multiplier when two-handed weapon equipped. For the third affix, you can pick up HPs, Flat, Multipliers, or some Chaos or Elemental Resistances, depending on what you need. Relics. You want to start with the Sebda. Because Sebda gives Elemental Damage Amplification. You want to get Recovery Speed on that. And um, Enhanced Damage Decrease. And if you are not afraid of dying, you can pick up Mental Stimulation Effect. It's gonna be more damage. After that, you can go into Hamal for, for the passive of Poison Penetration, for Poison Flat Damage and Poison Damage Multiplier. After that, it's up to you. You can go into Level for some extra attack speed, or you can go into Spica for, for maximized damage. You don't benefit from physical damage, however, you benefit highly from the chance to deal double maximized damage on a hit. For the last one, you can go Boreal for some extra HP. As the last one, you can only be able to do 15 levels, so this is the best you can pick up. Zodiac. So the most important thing to note is that you always want to spend your points first onto the specializations. So the first Spec is when you spend 22 points, second spec is when you spend 45, and the first spec is when you spend 70. Another thing to note is that whenever I say optional, that means you don't have to pick up it immediately. You only pick up it when you lack points to open up your specializations, or when you are later into the game. So we start with Afros, then into Wanderer, then into Gem. Prella, you can pick up whatever resistance you need the most. You can either pick up armor or dodge, whatever you need the most at the time. Petal, your first spec is gonna be Dawn, but later into the game, you will want to spec into Brilliance, as Brilliance is gonna be more damage, but Dawn is a little bit more friendly when you start the game. So we can get Uplift, then Overpower, then Strike Damage Amplification. Then you can pick up 
Convert mana, whenever you finish the quest in the Saluto, as it's gonna give you two extra points. However, convert mana leeches some of the HP from you, so you need some kind of way to sustain that health. There are two ways to sustain, one is gonna be Artemis, and third one is gonna be Specialization third. Then Flash, Frost, Frost is optional. This is later in the game. Whenever you can awaken your deadly poison for the verity and apply venom. When you can do that, you can get go into damage against enemies affected by the venom. Nemera. Float again optional. You only want to spend these points later into the game. And you want to spend two extra points in here for the last nodes. Last nodes are good. Second spec is hail. You can go into tempest. Tempest is really good because it doesn't overlap with acceleration. So if you're using acceleration like on a plague spike, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of movement speed. After that, into strike damage jump and into sharpness. Whenever you get two extra points from the saluto quests, you can remove sharpness and spec into element observer. Element observer is gonna be really good at higher level maps. Then into scent. Otem is an optional one. With this, you can sustain your convert mana. When you're doing maps, as it gives you HP on kill. Deadly Poison is optional. It only gonna work whenever you do a lot of damage. Cause to apply a debuff depends on the rate and on the damage that you do. So when you have a lot of damage or you're doing low level maps, you can pick up this. You spec into damage against blinded targets and apply blind as 10% amplify damage. Maggot, whenever you reach intelligence and dexterity 200 and more, you can pick up projectile damage. And if you have 200 strength, you can pick up plus 40% damage multiplier. Plague, for critical damage, some critical rates. Pharma for HP amplification, again optional. Hunter. Blacksmith. Then the first spec, Sympathy. You want to go to HP Absorb on hits. Whenever you pick that, you can remove Artemis, as this is going to give you a lot of su sustain. Then into Capable, Strike Damage Amplification. And you can spend 9 points immediately in here. You can pick up Attack Speed Amplification or HP, uh, HP Amplification. Whenever you open the first spec, you can start switching to Brilliance if you need more damage. Then Minstrel for some Poison Penetration. Itemization. So for any critical build that you do, you always look for the weapon with the highest critical base possible. For the bow, it's 11. For the affixes, we are looking for critical rate multiplier. This is the main one for any critical build. You always want to get that first. After that, whatever you can get. Critical damage is good. Poison damage flat is good. Then weapon damage multiplier. Weapon speed or weapon damage flat. Any of those is gonna be good. For the neck, we are looking for critical damage implicit neck. On the neck itself, you can pick up elemental damage multiplier, poison damage flat. After that, whatever you need the most. You can pick up some HP, some stats, some elemental resistance, or chaos resist. For the ring, again, we are looking for attack critical rate implicit ring. For the affixes, we are looking for attack critical rate multiplier, the main one. Then you can go into critical damage, into attack speed or elemental damage multipliers. Uh, after that is what you need. You can pick up some stats on the suffix or some resistances. And on the prefix you can pick up HP or a hit rate. On the chest, we are always looking for dodge rate multiplier. On high tier items, multiplier is going to be better than just gear dodge flat. After that, it's either HPs, hit rates, on the suffix part, it's resistances. On boots, the main difference is that, that you want to roll movement speed increase. This is the main one. After that, whatever you can get. Dodge rate multiplier is okay, HP is good, projectile damage for extra damage, and then on the suffix part, again, resistances or hit rate, whatever you need the most. Upgrades on the skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the Ogre Arrow. You want to pick up Source Awakening for Projectile Count. For the Plague Spike, you want to pick up uh, Verity for Elemental Damage Amplification. Then you want to have Chain 
Parallel Multi Shot, Strike, and Concentrated Area Damage on the Plague Spike. For the middle one, you can pick up Point Weakness if you lack some critical rate, or you can do Deadly Poison, but Deadly Poison is only gonna work when you awaken it to Verity. After you do that, you can change some of the Zodiacs. You can pick up trade 5 Frost for damage against Venom, and trade 7 Deadly Poison to apply Blind as Amplified Damage. After that, it's Seal of Striking. If you awaken Seal of Striking to a Rapid Seal, its source, it becomes like a buff instead of a toggle, and you can link Enhance Effect on it. It becomes like an extra, extra buff. For Maxman, you can do Totem Activation upon Enhance Skill, and use Weakened Totem. To get extra damage from the Weakened Totem, you can awaken it to source to apply Damage Shaken and Debuff after the Totem dies. That would be it. If you have any questions, I'm streaming on Twitch every single day or you can ask in the YouTube comments. So GG's and keep grinding.